What up, YouTube? Here with a post-fight video for Kazuto Ioka versus Donnie Nietes for the WBO Super Flyweight title. Now, this was a rematch from the first fight back four years ago, which ended in a split decision with Nietes walking out as the winner. Um, but after that, after that fight, um, the WBO had made Nietes relinquish that title. Now, I don't know why. For for those of y'all that know the reasons to why the WBO had Nietes vacate that title after his win. Y'all please let me know in the comments But without any further ado Let's get into the breaking down part Of what took place in this fight And before I give y'all a summary Of what took place um, I'm going to tell y'all the results first Ioka was able to pick up a decision win Out pointing and out working And out landing uh, Nietes uh, To you know uh, avenge that split decision loss from the first fight uh, a lot of people for those that tuned in to the first fight a lot of people have felt that Ioka should have won the fight I mean when it comes to split decision of fights um it's a close competitive match and that's why it's called a split decision the judges were split one of the judges had it for Ioka while the other two had it for Nietes and if y'all go tune into the first fight um, um, I'm sure it's somewhere out there on YouTube. Y'all can see the fight for yourselves. And it was a good back and forth uh, action filled uh, match uh, from, from their first meeting uh, back four years ago. But this time around uh, in the rematch, um, Ioka, like I said, he outworked them, outlanded them. Uh, Pushed Nietes back. It wasn't too much back and forth action. Um, in the beginning rounds, it was it was competitive. You know they were were trading blows, um, but as the fight uh, went on and as it got towards the middle rounds, that's when Ioka started to uh, take control and uh, it showed effects in Nietes with the punches that Ioka was accumulating on them, and he was able to force Nietes back with Nietes punches not really landing or finding its mark and um in the later rounds um i think it was the 10th round uh Ioka landed some good flush shots which caused um, a cut above Nietes' eye which had the doctors look at the, uh, the cut but it was like a small little laceration it didn't really mean much but they checked up on him anyways it didn't come from a clash of heads or an elbow or nothing like that it came from flush punches and I was also impressed by um, the output of combos that Ioka was uh, throwing out there and landing as well uh, all throughout this fight um, I personally had the fight score 117 to 111 in favor of Ioka um, uh, he retained that WBO title now I didn't get to check out any of the post fight interviews or the press conferences now Nietes mind y'all he beat Ioka in the first fight won that WBO title had to relinquish it and then after um after that took place, Nietes had, I think, three fights before stepping in there with Ioka again. His last fight, um, it was a split draw. I did not see any of his uh, uh, prior fights following the first fight uh, as far as Nietes' his latest fights go before this fight. Um, I haven't seen any of it, but he won two other fights before the last fight that he fought before getting in there with Ioka again. Um, I forgot his opponent its name but it was a split draw and ever since some um, Ioka won that vacated WBO title after losing the Nietes in the first fight he's his he's been on a impressive winning streak I think he's on the top 10 pound for pound rankings uh, with the ring magazine and he, he's steady on the come up I know he only has one title in that division but that division has a good mix up it's got plenty of, of fighters fighting at the top level uh in the super flyweight division for those of y'all that's tapped into the sport of boxing y'all know what i'm talking about but if y'all looking for friend fan friendly affairs and exciting fights look no further than the super flyweights they got plenty of uh, uh talent 
uh, that's uh, top caliber and that will put on thrillers for all fans. It, even if y'all not, you know, regular boxing fans or hardcore boxing fans or y'all watch it here and there. But if y'all looking for, you know, exciting, entertaining fights, look no further than uh, this weight class. And uh, Ioka, like I said, um, avenging that L versus Nietes in the fashion that he did um, really clears all questions from the first fight. Like I said, if y'all tuned into the first fight, a lot of people felt that Ioka should have won. It was a close fight, split decision. But the second fight, as we saw today, it was, you know, not that competitive. It wasn't back and forth. It was really, like I said, one-sided. So I don't think there's necessarily a need for a third fight between the two. Now, this is why I say, um, this is why I mentioned me not checking out the post-fight uh, interviews and press conferences. Now, I, I don't know how Niete might be feeling. Like, he's almost 40 years old. And for him to not be able to gain back the title that he never lost in the ring. Now, I will that, that might sting a little, but, you know, he's still one of the uh, more recognizable names in the super flyweight division. He could still be a one of the uh, top, top level gatekeepers in that division uh, if he decides to uh, uh, continue fighting. And as far as Ioka goes, he's got a lot of uh, options, a lot of choices to pick from far as you know his next opponents go i know he had that fight versus rodriguez then he fought somebody else in japan i think he fought another japanese dude uh cruised through that win via decision now i want to see him you know step up in competition now i know he's fought in america as well um obviously y'all seen um rodriguez uh stop rungasa i think it was a uh, a few weeks ago that he did that y'all go check that fight out um he he's young and on the come up that's the current a WBC super flyweight champion and uh, with an impressive win like that uh, being able to stop Rungasa you know he's definitely a talent to look out for then you also got Andrew Maloney that might be a good fight to make you know he's right there in Australia over there in the Pacific so that fight could be easily made either in Japan or Australia then you also have um, Franco then you got Chocolate Tito then you got Estrada uh, the names go on and on and on so he's got a lot of you know uh, guys to fight from then you also have um uh, uh Ancanas, who's another uh former filipino champion former ibf uh, super flyweight champion then i think um the dude that beat him the I current ibf super flyweight champion the argentinian fighter i think his last name is martinez i can't think of his name off the top of my head but y'all know what i'm talking about so he's got a lot of choices to pick from when it comes to his next opponents that he could fight at a top level or even go for that a uh, big title unification bout y'all let me know what y'all want to see uh in the super flyweight division more specifically what y'all want to see next from kazuto ioka the current wbo uh super flyweight champion like i said impressive performance my hats off to him um which i want to see next uh from from uh the current wbo champion and what's next for Niete? Do y'all think retirement or does he still fight um, out there in the East uh, more locally and, you know, um, be one of those top level gatekeepers at the super flyweight division? Uh, y'all let me know. Uh, comment, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Stay safe, stay healthy. Y'all already know. And I'm gone. Peace.